Hey, shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Waharika Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of the Most High God, the Most High Power of Israel. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, our Redeemer and Savior, the one whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, Yeshua, Christ, and other names. Ruka Kodash is the Holy Spirit that gives us the full understanding of this truth, which is a gift from our Savior, Yahweh Shai. My double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, GMS. Those are the men that taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth, pushing his gospel in all sincerity in his last days. Shall a warm also to the few sisters, Aquats, who are sincerely seeking his truth. It's the brother Yara Yaya Shar Allah from the GMS Italy camp. And I just wanted to do a quick lesson on the satanic origin of the Easter celebration. Now, I was watching a video put out by the elder post to Gabba this morning, in which, you know, he played a, a short clip in the video. And you see um, Vocab Malone, who is a sold out, you know, who I actually watched a video, a short video, that a brother sent this morning, you know, where he was actually making fun of the fact that, you know, he was he was approached by the Jesuits and FBI um, and they gave him a bag of money, you know. He was actually saying it jokingly, but I believe so deeply in my spirit that that's the, that's the truth because how can you be defending things that are misleading, things that are, that are clear that the origin is just wicked and detrimental for the growth, spiritual growth of the sons of Israel, you know. So that's how you know that this man, Vokab Malone, is a devil. He's doing the bidding of the devil, you know. And he better praise that he's not an Edomite because it would be a highly searched slave in the kingdom, man. So anyway, going to the topic, I have some excerpts. First of all, you we really need to understand that um, what happened in the Council of Nicaea. That's in 325 you know, AD, I believe, was it BC? No, 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 AD, okay, 325 AD. And I did, um, I did a, a lesson on that. You can, you can search for the lesson on this channel, you know, the origin of Christianity, you know, that's the title, I believe so. So here I have the satanic origin of Easter and here I have some, some excerpts from different books and also um, the encyclopedia, uh, encyclopedias, okay, excuse me for a slip of tongue. So I'm going to start reading from here. It says, the new Encyclopedia Britannica says, at Easter, popular customs reflect many ancient pagan leftovers, okay? At Easter, popular customs reflect many ancient pagan leftovers. In this instance, Connected with spring fertility rites, such as the symbols of the Easter egg and the Easter rabbit. And that's what the, the, the Encyclopedia Britannica tells you, you know. It says in the Catholic Encyclopedia, it says the rabbit is a pagan symbol and has always been an emblem of fertility. It says hot cross bones, and like Encyclopedia Britannica, says like the Greeks, the Romans, it's bread marked with a cross at the public sacrifices also crossed bread was eaten by pagan saxons in honor of eostre okay they are goddess of light now um if you go to the root word of um to the etymology of easter it goes back to eostre okay which is a, a pagan deity of fertility by the by the saxons you know and that's what um, Vokab Malone is saying. This is um, that it's not connected to to Easter. Okay, that Easter is being spoken of in the Bible, in which we're going to touch on that. But you see, at the end of the day, Eostre is a pagan deity. Okay, she was a, a deity of fertility. That's what is, these pagans they do when um, when it's about spring. They wait for the full moon before it's spring. Then I believe. Is it 10 days after or so? I can't remember how, how, how they calculate that thing. And they, they, they do their worship. They, they do different kinds of sacrifices. They also sacrifice humans and babies, in which I'm going to show you in this lesson. Now, let me just get a real quick scripture. This is the book of 
2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, and verse 14, it says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship at righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion as light with darkness, and what concord at Amashiach with Belia, which is Beal, okay? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? You know, this is exactly what it is. What does the scripture have to do with the celebration of a pagan deity of um of fertility what, what what do they have to do is it written in the bible that we should celebrate the easter you know there is no easter in the bible when the bible the, the, the parts where you see the bible speaking of easter it's actually pasak okay and pasak is passover let me see Easter. So you see, this is the book of Acts 12 and 4. Now, if you go there, you see, I says, and when he apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, if you go to that word Easter, where is it? Right here. You know, the Strong's, it tells you it's Pasak. Okay, Pasak, that's where you get the Passover, the Passover, okay? And the Passover has nothing to do with the celebration that they're doing now. The Passover is a solemn, um, is a solemn, um, is a solemn feast, okay? In which we break bread, we, we, we drink wine, we eat lamb, okay? And bitter herbs, okay? And it's something that's that's meant to be held in, in in your houses, each family in their houses. You know, we already did lessons on on Passover. You know, so you can go check out those lessons. And we know, according to according to to the calendar, you know, the new moon marks the beginning of the month. We've done various lessons on this. The new moon marks the beginning of the month. So when it's the new moon, you count fourteen days, and that's when you start your Passover for seven days. Okay. You eat on you, you don't you don't have to eat any unleavened bread. Okay? So this is what it is, you know, it has nothing to do with this Easter that's being pushed to us, you know. This has this Easter has all pagan roots. And thanks to Constantinople, um Constantino in 325, you know, um AD, Anno Domini, you know. He, 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 he emerged everything all together. Let me be let me let me be sure of what I'm saying. I believe it's let me see. Um Council of Nicaea. Because I already did a lesson on this, so you can just go check the history of Christianity. You see. Oh, first counts. Okay, you see, you see, three twenty-five common error, current error, or whatever you call it. You see, so um, I was right on that. Okay, so three twenty-five can. Now, let me go back to what I have on deck here, because in which I need to come to this. Now, going back to the excerpts, it says, Concerning the customs of making hot cross buns, the book East Easter and its custom states, this is a book, Easter and its custom states, the cross was a pagan symbol long before it acquired significance from the event of the first Good Friday, and bread and cakes were sometimes marked with a cross before Christian times. And truly, the cross actually goes back to the Egyptians, man, to the Sumerians, they were the ones that were worshipping his crosses and all that thing, you know? So when you go to the churches and they put those crosses right before you, they do those signs of crosses, those, that all goes back to pagan worship because the Bible doesn't tell you anything about all these things. And what does the Bible tell you in the book of um, Isaiah, the 8th chapter? The 20th verse 
He says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If they speak not according to this book, according to the word of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai that's written in the Bible, it means that there is no light in them. And you know, from time to time, we see that they've tried to 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 infuse, you know, this pagan worship into the true worship, you know, which as is an identity, is a heritage, you know, because the laws and statutes were given to only a set of people. It wasn't given to the world, you know. And we also warned in the book of Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. Khan, verse 2. Let me read from verse 1. It says, Hear ye the word which Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Israel, so you see, it's being referred to the house of Israel. Israel, Israel is the only one that the Most High, you know, made this date and uh, uh, made the laws and commandments for. For the other nations, they gave them deities and worship of stones and wood. It says, "Thus said Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathens are dismayed at them." So we are not meant to learn the way of the heathen, and that's what. What's been heavily pushed, you know, it says an explanation for the use of eggs at Easter is found in the Catholic Encyclopedia. It says the custom may have its origin in paganism for a great many pagan customs celebrating the return of spring transferred to Easter celebrations. The egg is the emblem of the developing life in early springs, Sp early spring. Eggs were said to be painted and eaten at the fest uh, at the spring festival in ancient Egypt, Persia, Greece, and Rome. Celebration. The very name Easter relates to a pagan goddess. What did we read here? He says, Thus said Yahweh, learn not the way of the hidden. That's the custom of this um of this um civilizations that were before us. And really, to be to be to be to be sincere about this, all this goes back to the ancient Sumerians, okay, which we're also going to touch on that real quick. This is the Westminster Dictionary of the Bible. It states that Easter was originally the spring festival aired at the spring equinox in honor of the pagan goddess of fertility, light, and spring, known in in Anglo-Saxon as Elstre. Okay, so this is the argument um, Vocab Melon was bringing out. In any way he wants to bring it out, even if he says that Elstre is not Ishtar, is not Ashret, you know, in which we're going to point bring that out real quick. You know, even if he says all this, what as the worship of a, of a pagan deity, a pagan goddess for that for that for that point, okay, what does he have to do with the truth of the Bible? Is there anywhere in the Bible that we've been told to do that? No. The Most High has, you know, He has commanded us to watch out for this thing. This is the book of Exodus, the 23rd chapter. I read verse 2. And this is one of the things that has gotten us to where we are today as a nation. We've been um, um, below in the societies where we find ourselves. It says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shall thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. You know? So, this is this is a commandment that's been given to us. We're not meant to join a multitude of people to do evil. You know, it doesn't mean that... The, 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 because Christianity, I believe, is the, is the biggest um, religion on earth. You know? If the, if the majority are celebrating this pagan worship, doesn't mean we have to follow them to do this. Remember, the Bible tells you that many are called and few are chosen, you know? So, we really need to pay attention to all this. Verse 24. Verse 24 says, Let me read from verse 22. It says, For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites, the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hevites, the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. You know? And it's the same thing 
that that's, we, are, we are teaching today, you know, the angel is Yahweh Shai that is coming. Yahweh Shai is returning and is coming to destroy the gods of all the lands. Remember that we are under the rulership of, of, um, of, the, of the ancient Romans, the ancient Greeks and Romans, you know. In the right sense, we are still under their rulership. Only that they just transmuted themselves and they became known as the Americans, as the Italians, as, as the British, you know. It's still the same people, you know. This is the last leg on the on the on the statue that um, King Nebuchadnezzar had uh, a vision about. You know, this is the last kingdom, and Yahweh is coming to break their images. Is coming to destroy their images, and we are meant not to bow down to their gods nor serve them. You know, all what's been pushed, even the name Jesus itself, is a pagan deity. I already did a lesson on this channel. You can go search the name Jesus is um is um is connected to to a, a bloodthirsty deity, you know. I've done all these things, you know, and this is why we are here to call our people out, you know, to wake up from this um from this false religion, this wickedness, and the same people that are pushing all this, you know, like here in Italy, the Pope he holds a service. The Easter service in which, you know, people are gathered, they do the sign of cross on their forehead and all that thing, you know. These people, they eat babies and drink bloods, man. They commit all kinds of wickedness that your mind cannot contain. You know, these are your, these are your, these are your, these are your, um, your, what do you call them? These are your priests, man. These are the people, you know, ordering your services. And these are, these are Dagon, Dagon, um, Dagon priests, you know, we already showed you. All this, you know. I'm just real. Let me just show you real quick. Dagon priest. That's why you know they tell you on Ash Friday or so. They tell you not to eat meat. That you should eat fish. You know. They tell you if you eat if you eat uh, meat, you're eating the flesh of of Jesus. You know they say you should eat fish. Why do you think they tell you all that? Because everything is you know is centered to the worship of the Dagon priest, the fish deity. You know, you see the fish. That's what your Pope has on his head today. You know, but the people are blind. You know, they're blind. They go after all these wicked traditions of of the world that has nothing to do with the true original teachings of the Bible, you can see. Now, this current Pope that is in power, you know, he doesn't regularly put on this, this Mitra, it's called a Mitra, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't put it on because he knows that people have found out that, you know, it's, uh, it's alludes to the worship, it's, uh, to the worship of the, the, the fish deity, which is called Dagon. And this, this deity is also found in the Bible, is the deity of the Philistines. Remember when um when the, the Ark of the Covenant was taken into the, the 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 temple of this deity, this deity it fell on the floor and broke into pieces, man. You know? So you see, people are blind, you know, they go after the traditions of men without knowing. You know, that's why we're calling you people to wake up. And remember what um the book of um Isaiah the eighth chapter the twentieth verse says. It says, if they speak not according to this, what's written in this book, it's because there is no light in them. Okay. Now, going back to the excerpts, it says, by the 8th century, the name was transferred by the Anglo-Saxons to the Christian festival designed to celebrate the resurrection of Christ, you know, which has nothing to do. They just transferred the ancient pagan worship into um, the resurrection of Yahweh Shai, which has nothing to do. It says springtime was sacred to the sex worshippers of the ancient Mediterranean world. It says their fertility goddess as as start there. Another ancient name for Eoster has had had as a symbol the egg and the rabbit. Now, speaking of you see, it tells you that Astarte is another name for Eoster. You know. Now, as I told you that this. Is a pagan worship that has led back to the ancient Sumerians. This is the deity Inanna, okay? 
it says this is the deity right as you see it says inanna is this ancient sumerian goddess of love sensuality fertility procreation and also of war she later became identified by the Akkadians and the Assyrians as the goddess Ishtar. That's where you get your name Ishtar from. It says, and further with the Hittites, Sauska, the Phoenician Astarte, and the Greek Aphrodite. So you see, these deities, their names from time to time are being changed by different civilizations. You know, it says she was also seen as the bright star of the morning and the evening venus and identified with the roman goddess it says inanna is one of the candidates cited as the subject of the bonly relief better known as the queen of the night okay so you see that's that's the deity you know you see she goes by different names ishtar astarte okay sauska aphrodite aphrodite and venus you see so this is how from time to time these names are changed they are muted but don't be dismayed okay because they are all ancient deities we are warned not to worship them and now that name let me see I'm trying to see. I can't. Well, it's, it doesn't matter anyway. Let's go back to the lesson. I was looking for a scripture that I can't remember right now. So it says, going back to what we're reading, it says, by the 8th century, the name was transferred by the Anglo Saxons to the Christian festival designed to celebrate the resurrection of Amashia. We've read all this. It says, Another angel, okay, it says, Springtime was sacred to the sex worshippers of the ancient Mediterranean world. Their fertility goddess, Astarte, an ancient name for Elster, had as a symbol the egg and the rabbit. Ends come the eggs that are being, you know, given during Easter and the rabbit. So what has the rabbit and the eggs to do with the Bible, Okay. We, we've seen the perfect um the perfect um passover how it's meant to be held out when you shy the last supper okay known as the last supper was he was it was he offering any eggs or was he speaking about any female deity worship no you know in which the passover is very very symbolic is highly symbolic and it's very very important because the passover you know it's like it's like, you know, putting that mark on yourself that's spoken of in the book of um, of um, Ezekiel, is it the ninth chapter, you know, which speaks of that, that mark that's going to be set on the sons of Israel, which is the Tawah, you know? And that mark is the blood of Yahweh Shai that's going to save us from the destruction to come. So this has nothing to do with any fertility goddess or a rabbit or, or, or eggs. She had an unquenchable thirst for blood and immoral sex. Now, when you when you when you practice this Easter, this is what you're actually doing. You're sacrificing to this deity that has unquenchable thirst for blood and immoral sex, and this deity can furthermore be traced down also to the deities that the Indians worship, the Elamites, which is the the, the Kali. Okay, so you see, every nation, you know, they take the name, they call it the way they want it, you know. So this day they're calling it Easter. It says in Canaan, the sex goddess was the wife of Baal. She was honored by drunken sex orgies. Ends come all these sex orgies that are being held by the so-called elites of the society. We know the elites of the society don't do the bidding of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. They do the bidding of Satan. You know that's why it's told in the book of Job, the ninth chapter, that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Who is the wicked? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man that's in power. That's Esau, Edom. And now when we speak about the so-called white man, we have many brothers amongst us that looks like the so-called white man, you know? 
It's not the it's not the color that really matters who's a Israelite. It's the spirit. If your spirit resounds with this truth that we're teaching, if your heart accepts this truth, then you're most definitely a son of Israel. You know? Because the wicked is not going to accept this truth. That's how the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahusha has programmed it. Now it says, She was honored by drunken sex orgies. The worshippers believed that their sexual activities helped to bring out to bring about the full awakening and mating of Bial with his wife. Now, why do you think that your so-called celebrities, they always have all these, hey, go watch the movie Eyes Wide Shut, okay? That shit is a real movie, man. That thing goes down. Even worse than that, those things go down in real life, you know? Your so-called politicians, you know, your top people of the societies, they all meet, you know? And have all these wicked things they do. These are parts of the of the what do you call it? These are parts of the rites that they have to do in order to 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 give honor and homage to their deities, to their gods that they worship. Because these people don't worship the god of the Bible; they worship the gods of 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 the heathens. Man, they are devils, actually. You know. Now he says, beneath memorials to Ah in Carthage, which is Tunisia, North Africa. Brightly colored urns were discovered containing the bones, bones of little children. Their parents had sacrificed them to seek the blessings of the gods. Are you wondering why, you know, we have children missing every year? Are you wondering why babies are missing? Um, are you wondering, there are some things I, I really want, I want to say, but I can't say them because they'll clip down this video real immediately. You know, there are some buzzwords. You know, that thing that they get from the blood of children when they terrify them, you know, it ends with chrome, you know, then uh, you can add the, the, these two words, uh, these three words to it at the beginning. Um, are they? No. Okay. I wouldn't go more than that. Then you add it with that chrome. You know, you whatever comes out, you know what it is. Why do you think they do all these things, you know, in order to worship this deity? And now this Easter period that you're seeing, they are holding all different kinds of um of top sacrifices human sacrifices that we don't even know about people don't know about and what they do is they come out in the vatican you know he does that cross and enchants you people with with the witchcraft you know you all really need to wake up this is 2022 this is not even supposed to be a subject we should be talking about we're not meant to be teaching you that easter worship is pagan it's something you should know okay this is something you should know yourself just like the rest of all the celebrations that they do, Christmas, St. Valentine's and all these things. If you can go to the channel, spoken about Christmas, you know, spoken about um, Valentine's Day. We speak about all these things, but the people are still carried away by, 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 by the worship and the traditions of these other nations. And this is what gets the most high angry with us, you know. But guess what? This time around, he has he's coming back to kill, to destroy, because he already came back to save, to 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 to, to be the perfect sacrifice for you to come back. Now, if you don't want to get this truth and you believe that you should follow Christianity, Islam, and the rest of all these uh, religions, follow Vokab Melon, man, I don't really know what to tell you, man. You know, because this truth is not really something sweet and compelling. You know, it has to do with the spirit. If the Most High opens your eyes to get it, you get it, man. We're not begging people. We only have to tell you the truth the way it is. Easter is a pagan worship. Then don't let anyone deceive you. Because I, I told you in the last video that I did, there are lots of agents out there, you know, being paid off, in which I'm going to see now if I can, you know, bring out the video of, um, of Vocab Melon, you know, speaking on this thing real, real quick, man. Now it says, um, you see, they had they offered they offered sacrifice. These were actual bones that were found in Carthage, which is Tunisia, not Africa, where they found you know uh, close to the to the to the altar where they they worship this deity. They found bones, bones, bones of children. You know, the parents had sacrificed their children to seek blessings from these deities, man. So he says, this is the American Book of Days. It says, there is no doubt that the church in its early days adopted the old pagan customs and gave a Christian meaning to them. As the festival of Eustre was in celebration of the renewal of life in the spring, it was easy to make it a celebration of the resurrection from the dead of 
Amashiach. You see, it says the book, this is the book on the book Curiosities of Curiosities of Popular Customs tells us it was the policy of the early church to give a Christian significance to existing pagan ceremony that could not be uprooted. And this goes back to Constantinople. You know, this goes back to the Council of Nicaea that I showed you. It says, in the case of Easter, the change was fairly easy. Joy at the rising of the natural sun and at the awakening of nature from the death of winter became joy at the rising of the sun of righteousness at the resurrection of Hamashiach. You see, some of, some of the pagan ceremonies which took place in the spring were also shifted to correspond with the celebration of Easter and all this, the Most High has permitted all this to be a stumbling block to certain, certain people, man. You know, because many are called, few are chosen. It says, rather than steer clear of popular pagan customs and magical rites, the religious leaders made allowances for them and gave them Christian significances. It says, giving much some background to its paganism, the book Easter and its customs observed. This is the book Easter and its customs. It says, it was in spring in the season of new life and revival when from ancient time the pagan people of europe and asia held their spring festivals performing magical and religious ceremonies to make the crops grow and prosper pagan spring springtime rituals connected with gods such as tammuz osiris which is the tammuz is the babylonian deity known to the um, Egyptians as Osiris and to the Greeks as Adonis, okay, flourished in the Mediterranean world and further north and east, there were other practice, um, practicing similar rituals. Inevitably, some of their customs and symbols were carried forward into the Eastern custom. In conclusion, Easter is definitely not for true Christians. And guess who the true Christians are? we hebrew israelites that we're out you know because the word christian is a derogatory word that was used to mock the followers of amashiach and if and, and and these people the, the first christians were called in antioch which is modern day turkey i believe or syria sorry if i'm not mistaken you know one of the two turkey or syria you know i believe syria i believe more syria okay the first christians were called um in antioch you know, and this was used to mock them that they follow the Amashiach. Okay, and we we follow the Amashiach. What he says, a true Christian is he that follows the words as it's written, just like I showed you in the book of um, Isaiah 8 20, 20. You know, so hey, um, let me bring out a few more scriptures, you know, and then I'll close out. This is the book of um, uh, uh, let me see. Deuteronomy 12 and verse 30. It says, Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. Okay? <laughs> Speaking about the gods and the deities of the lands. It says, Take heed to thyself that be not snared. You know, we're meant to be vigilant, man. We're meant to be vigilant, you know, just like the second book of um, Timothy, the second chapter, the 15 verse, it says, study to show thyself approved, you know, or uh, uh, let me get, let me get real quick, then I'll come back here. Where is it? Second Timothy 2, 15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto the most high, Yahweh, Shemi, Shai, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, you know. We are meant to divide the world of truth. Now, Easter, as it has been, as, as been taught by the Christians, is a pagan religion. So we've divided that word and it says, Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that they be destroyed from before thee. And, and, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did this nation serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. You know? So, these nations, they bring in to you the worship of their deities. And, you know, people are blind. They just take everything in without questioning, man. Let me see. A couple more scriptures and I'll close. 
is Ezekiel 20, 23. This is Ezekiel 20, 23. Say, I lifted up mine hand unto them also in the wilderness, that I would scatter them among the Eden and disperse them through the countries. So you see, this one tells you also that the sons of Israel are dispersed in various parts of the world, in different countries, because we disobeyed the Most High. And it says here, because they had not executed my judgment, but had despised my statues and had polluted my Shabbat, and their eyes were after their father's idols. So you see, you know, we're going from time to time uh, because we don't, we are most of us, all of us, you know, I believe many of us, not all of us, majority of us, you know, we woke up into, we were born into families that are going after this different religion, uh, Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, and those are the worship of other nations, you know? So, it's your it's your duty, man, to 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 pray to the Most High Yahweh Shemi Shai to open your eyes to show you the way in which you need to walk. You know, it's your duty to 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 seek and you shall find. To knock and it shall be open to you to get understanding and learn all these things and come out from these worships. You know, but then you know it's all the doings of the Most High Yahweh Shemi Shai Baruch Kodash. Those whom he had ordained that they are going to wake up to this truth are going to wake up. And they wouldn't go after the deities of other nations. To close, let me bring out the book of Psalm 96. In the fifth chapter, it says, For all the gods of the nations are idols, but Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai made the heavens. You see, the gods of all the other nations are idols. The only true God is the God of Israel. You know, only Israel. Going back to Psalm, excuse me, I said I was going to close 147. He says, He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye, Yahweh Shem Yahushai. So the true Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and the Latinos for the major part. And you have the rest who are spread into other nations, looking like the nations where they find themselves. You know, the gods of the other nation are idols. So going back to, to this, when you practice your Easter worship and all that thing, you're paying homage to this idol right here. Okay. So this is one of its, uh, one of its, and that's our husband, Baal. Okay. Baal. Okay. Anyway, hopefully this lesson was edifying to the spirit and power of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Shai. You know, pay attention. There are lots of agents in these last days paid to make videos to deceive you. You know, to fight against this truth, but they will not succeed because you know what the Most High has has established is going to stand. So you know, as I said, on to the next one. All praises to the Most High Yahweh Hashem Shai Hashem Kakudash. My double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom.